What's up, everyone? One question I often get is, what do you recommend I read if I want to know more about Goju? This is a very difficult question to answer. I mean, for one, if I give away all my sources, then all my viewers will just go read those, and I'll be out of a job. But seriously, it can be hard to give a recommendation list because, well, it really depends on what someone's looking for. If you want resources on technique and theory, you won't get that from a book that focuses on history. And if you're interested in history, a book on self-defense strategies will leave you wanting. Unfortunately, I haven't yet read every book on Goju Ryu in existence, but I have read a lot of them. So in this video, I'd like to introduce you all to a small selection of books that I've found particularly useful in my karate research. I've loosely organized this list into four categories, Goju Ryu, karate in general, history, and active researchers. Within each section, there's no particular order apart from the general rule of trying to keep like subjects together. And the whole list is going to be in the description, with links to where you can pick up your own copies. Let's get into it. I'm starting out with books about Goju Ryu because I figure that viewers of this channel will probably enjoy learning more about Goju. I mean, you're not watching the Shotokan philosopher after all. Goju Ryu history is very difficult to piece together, as there aren't many primary sources. That's why Goju Ryu Karate Do Desk Reference by John Paul Williams is the most useful historical account of Goju history on the market. Sensei Williams has put together an incredibly comprehensive, thoroughly researched, and compellingly presented 450-page monograph. This book is a vital resource for karateka interested in the history of Goju Ryu. If it had been around when I was first starting this channel, my very first series of videos would have used it as a main source, and in fact, I may actually use it to update those videos in the near future. For those of you who are more interested in the techniques of Goju Ryu, my next recommendation, The Kata and Bunkai of Goju Ryu by Giles Hopkins, will be well worth checking out. Sensei Hopkins has three books, including this one, a collection of essays, and a deep dive into Super Empe, the final kata in the Goju Ryu syllabus. All three books are wonderful, but I feel that The Kata and Bunkai is the most accessible entry point. This book was very formative to my understanding of how kata are structured and how to analyze their contents. While I don't always fully agree with Sensei Hopkins' conclusions about the Bunkai, I do believe that his methodology is second to none. His analysis benefits greatly from his time spent training under various lineages, which allows him to compare the variations of different versions of the kata and better triangulate the core of what connects them. Sensei Hopkins' analytical framework is also useful for other karate styles, making this book a must-read. My next two recommendations are actually a series of books. I usually avoid buying or recommending style handbooks, books which provide a basic outline of the major techniques for new or prospective students of a particular style or lineage. I've simply read too many variations on this format. However, I make an exception for these two series. The first of these is Traditional Karate Do Okinawa Goju Ryu by Higaona Morio Sensei. Higaona Sensei is a legendary figure in Goju Ryu, having founded the IOGKF, which boasts the largest membership of any Okinawan karate organization in the world, before splitting off in 2022 to found his new federation, the TOGKF. In this four-part series, Higaona Sensei presents a very comprehensive explication of Goju Ryu technique and practice. There are a few issues I do have to note. The first of these is that, while Higaona Sensei's presentation of Ryukyu in history and karate history was very standard for the time when it was written, more recent research has disproven or cast doubt on some of the historical claims, particularly those related to Ryukyuan king Shoshin's katanagari policy and its effect on the development of unarmed Ryukyuan fighting arts. However, as discerning readers, I'm sure you all won't have a problem navigating that. The bigger issue is that these books are hard to find, since they only had a few small print runs. The Amazon listings for each book start at just under $200 for all of them except the first, which has options as low as $142.42. Personally, I only have a physical copy of the second volume, which I chanced upon at half price books for $60. Nevertheless, if you can find a copy, these books are well worth the effort to acquire. However, the other handbook series on this list is much easier to get a hold of. Okinawan Goju Ryu 1 and 2 by Toguchi Seikichi Sensei present the basic curriculum of Shorekan Goju Ryu, but the specific reason I recommend them, especially the second book, is that they provide a valuable look into both the theoretical underpinnings of Goju and the personal history of the first generation of Miyagi Sensei's students. Within these two books, Toguchi Sensei lays out the Kaisai no Genri, his theory of kata analysis, and provides some personal recollections of his journey as a karate student of Higa Seiko Sensei and Miyagi Chojun Sensei. I particularly appreciated his explanation of the Fukugata, which he created to serve as a systematic introduction to Goju Ryu and to help promulgate karate. 
The choices Toguchi-sensei made with these kata provide interesting insights into how karateka in the post-war period went about spreading their art to both mainland Japanese and foreign practitioners. My final goju-specific recommendation is, to my knowledge, only available in Japanese, but for those who can read Japanese, it makes for an incredible historical reference. Toguchi Sekichi Sensei's Karate no Kokoro contains a treasure trove of information and recollections from his life in even more detail than his translated books. He expands on how he created the Shorekan curriculum, recounts how and why he eventually moved his dojo to mainland Japan, and even details his thoughts on the developing landscape of karate competition. Karate no Kokoro is essential not only as a piece of history, but also as a primary source from a goju sensei whose activities spanned the pre-war and post-war periods. Toguchi's personal recollections and assorted thoughts paint an interesting picture that you can't get from just the historical facts. Karate no Kokoro was published in 1986 and is currently out of print. I acquired my copy by reaching out via email to the Shorekan Hombu. They've expressed interest in arranging for a second print run, and I hope that, if enough people request it, this valuable autobiography can be reprinted and widely read. If you want to expand your understanding of karate beyond just goju, I do have a few books that I find useful that cover karate more generally. To keep this section from being too long, I've left out books that deal with specific styles. And this first book is, in a way, about every style. Okinawan Karate by Mark Bishop is a fair and comprehensive overview of all the major styles of karate in existence. It also supplements the thorough descriptions of each style with profiles on important masters, historical and contemporary. Mark Bishop has done extensive personal research on Okinawan martial arts, and has written several other books covering kobudo weapons and styles, as well as T, the palace martial arts at the heart of a number of prominent karate styles. There really isn't a better overview of various styles of karate out there, and I use Okinawan karate as a reference anytime I need more information about a style I'm not familiar with. For bunkai lovers, The Way of Kata by Lawrence A. Kane and Chris Wilder is an incredibly comprehensive look at kata analysis by two authors who are personal idols of mine. Their methodology is built on the Kaisai no Genri, but it's their real-life experience with actual self-protection in fighting that allows them to elevate and expand the methodology into a framework that I believe would serve well for any karateka, regardless of style. I also had to mention this book because both of the authors are senseis I would love to one day train under, if Sensei Wilder hadn't moved all the way out to Spokane. Another excellent book by Caden Wilder also deserves a place on this list, The Little Black Book of Violence. While not specific to karate, this book and its presentation of the realities of civilian self-protection are an essential reality check for any of us who practice martial arts. In order to drive home the medical, legal, and ethical realities of real-life violence, Kane and Wilder include chilling statistics, disturbing anecdotes, and gruesome photographs. Though the legal advice is specific to U.S. jurisprudence, the advice on threat avoidance, the tools for de-escalation, and the reminders of the real stakes of violence are indispensable no matter where you are. One of my life goals, even beyond this channel, is to bring a more academic perspective to the study of karate. As such, it excites me when I see other researchers doing the same. Herman Bayer's Analysis of Genuine Karate is a wonderful example. Dr. Bayer's research fascinates me immensely as someone who's specifically interested in studying the way karate is used to create both Japanese and Okinawan cultural identities. He makes an interesting distinction between the historical karate jutsu and the modern budo karate and sport karate and provides a first-hand perspective on the recent movement to return to roots among karateka. And finally, since we're talking about returning to roots, Mario McKenna is an exceptional karateka, one of the top senseis within day trip distance that I'd like to one day train with, and a prolific translator. His translation of Itoman Morinobu's The Study of China Hand Techniques was a fascinating glimpse into the way ordinary practitioners viewed karate in the pre-war era. Itoman was a police officer and intended this book for other officers, leading to a frank and focused discussion of karate as it existed, including strikes, throws, resuscitation techniques, and fixed or free sparring. Since I just finished with a recommendation that covers more historical accounts of karate, I think now is a good time to be reminded that history is best understood in its broader context. As I move into the recommendations that aren't about karate at all, I'd like to share some of that context. Okinawa, The History of an Island People by George Kerr is the first full-length academic work in English and the definitive guide to Okinawa. Covering from the earliest written histories to the post-war USCAR occupation, this book remains the most comprehensive monograph on Okinawan history. It was originally published in 1958 and has been updated continually with new information and clarifications until Kerr's death in 1992. It is also incredibly well-written and keeps the reader engaged, so don't balk at the length. Instead, Cherish it as a sign that you're getting the most knowledge for your money. I also do have to include one gimme here, Patrick McCarthy's translation of the Bubishi. 
Hunchy McCarthy and his work probably need no introduction to the majority of my audience, but in case I'm the first place you hear about him, Hanshi McCarthy has been training and researching karate for many decades, and expanded his research to cover the historical Chinese arts on which many karate styles are based. The Bubishi is a famous book within karate history, referred to as the Bible of Karate for its importance as a record of Fujianese white crane that directly influenced a number of famous karateka. Hanshi McCarthy's translation is second to none, and the most recent edition, published in 2016, adds incredible contributions by many other accomplished researchers. This last recommendation is for me specifically. If you have all of my same interests, especially my research interests, then you will buy this and read it cover to cover, and maybe even get a second one to keep by your nightstand so you can always have it with you. The Historical Sociology of Japanese Martial Arts by Raul Sanchez Garcia is a preview of the kind of work I want my academic career to produce. It has an entire index entry on karate and several more on notables such as Motobu Choki and Miyagi Chojun, but it also has a discussion of how battlefield skills were, or weren't, adapted into sport competitions. Garcia discusses how the Meiji government connected martial arts to Nihonjinron, the theory of innate Japanese cultural identity. He brings in the intentional export of Japanese martial arts internationally, and even the way that non-Japanese institutions, like the International Olympic Commission, affected the path those arts took in the 20th and 21st centuries. He talks about the formation of martial ryu as a concept. This book is as technical, as academic, as thorough, and as dense as its name implies, and I for one absolutely love that. That's the end of my book recommendations for now, although trust me this is a significantly pared down list. But there are still a few other resources that I want to highlight. Andreas Quast is, in my opinion, hands down the best karate researcher currently active outside of Japan. He has several incredible translations and original research books on the market, but is probably best known among modern karateka for his blog, Ryukyu Buge, for which he has written over 800 articles in the past decade and change, ranging from assorted thoughts to groundbreaking revelations. Between getting the idea for this video and writing this script, Andy decided to migrate his body of work to Patreon. Membership is a steal at $5 per month, and you can purchase individual articles if you want a downloadable PDF version or if you want to see the quality of his work before committing to the recurring payment. I highly recommend Andy's work to anyone and everyone interested in karate research. Another outstanding pair of karate researchers are Yannick Schulze and Sanae Schulze Naruyama, whose articles have been published in the Japanese magazine Gekkan Hiden, a monthly periodical on Japanese martial arts. In April, Yannick brought attention to a newly discovered photograph of Miyagi Chojun Sensei taken on Miyagi's trip to Hawaii. Yannick is the first Western researcher to investigate this, and is planning on publishing his discoveries, as well as the results of research and interviews conducted during a recent trip to Japan, in the near future. In addition to co-conducting this research, Sanae is currently in the process of writing a book on Higao no Kanryo Sensei, from whom she might be descended. You can find their work in Japanese on Gekkan Hiden's web editions, and in English, and sometimes German, on Yannick's blog, Karate Ken Kyushitsu. The best active karate researcher within Japan is Motobu Naoki Shihan, who is the son of Motobu Chosei, the current head of Motobu Ryu. Yes, that Motobu Ryu. He currently runs two blogs, an English language one on Medium, and a Japanese language one on Note, which cover not just Motobu Kenpo and Motobu Udundi, but all styles of karate, other Okinawan arts, and mainland Koryu Bujutsu. Both blogs share many of the same articles, although there are some articles found on one but not the other. The Medium blog also has a number of its articles translated into Portuguese, German, and French. Many, but not all, of the Medium articles are members only, which means they require a $5 a month membership to view in their entirety. But to my knowledge, the Note articles are all free, so uh... Learn Japanese? Or just pay the very reasonable fee, which gets you access to the entire site, not just Motobu Shihan's articles. Hopefully these recommendations will keep y'all busy for quite a while. They certainly have for me. While I know many of us would love to train as often as Tito Ortiz, uh, five days a week, I'll train three days a week. Uh, one of those days, I'll train two days of the week, so six days a week I'll be training. The reality is we can't be in the dojo 24-7, but by reading and researching, you can train your mind even when your muscles are on a well-earned break. As I mentioned at the start, the full list is in the description of this video, complete with links. I hope that every one of my viewers can find at least one book here to check out to enrich their understanding of Goju Ryu and karate as a whole. I couldn't fit every book or researcher I wanted to mention on this list, so keep an eye on the sources that accompany my videos, or shoot me an email if you'd like to learn more. Are there any other books or resources that you'd recommend? Let everyone know in the comments, which I will be shamelessly patrolling to find anything I haven't already read and add it to my ever-growing wishlist. 
Until next time, I'm the Goji Guru Philosopher, and it's time for me to head back to my library. <laughs>